Banks have become the sinosure of uh, stock market investors, but among them, Federal Bank is up there in news. Uh, they gathered nearly 4,000 crores in terms of a QIP issue. And uh, CNBC TV 18 broke the news that uh, they were oversubscribed by several times, by the five, six times, uh, in terms of investors queuing up for the share. As well, a new interesting NRE account for women. So lots to talk to the managing director and CEO of Federal Bank, Sham Srinivasan, who is our guest today. Sham, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, let me first start with the QIP. Uh, it was our story. Uh, we heard that the subscription was six, seven times. Is that right? Yeah, it's, uh, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's been almost like a T20 match. You know? So there's a lot of build up to it and it turned out to be uh, really exciting. Uh, when we set out, uh, as you mentioned, last year in the AGM, we had an approval for up to 4,000 crores of capital raise. And we did two parts. One is a QIP for 3,000. The other 1,000 is uh, in the process of getting completed, which is, uh, you may have also seen that, there's a preferential allotment to IFC. So an existing shareholder looking to take up uh, a higher share in the bank, and we're quite excited by that. On specific to QIP, like you mentioned, I think the subscription for the 3,000 3040 to be specific we had bids closer to 20000 crores Yay, okay. right? so it's quite a quite a uh, exciting one i had done one in 2017 when we received i think uh, close to two and a half or three times i thought that was good this time it, Seven uh, times? yeah it was quite okay. uh, quite uh, uh, encouraging exciting uh, the uh, our first you know the objective was very clear right we did want uh, wider range of investors to look at us. We did want people to think of us as long term and not short term. Uh, we did want a mix of domestic and foreign. I'm happy that you would have seen the list that has been put out. Uh, I think the process got completed late last night. So the shareholders have got their shares and they are hopefully happy shareholders or will be very happy. Uh, it's been a nice and encouraging mix of people who are long term shareholders uh, from outside India, from domestic from the large mutual fund houses. And what was most encouraging is the uh, bids that came in were uh, hefty and quite contested for. So we did have a, a brief moment of, can I get more kind of moment, right? More, more people asking us, can I get uh, more of your, which is, a, which is a, I think, a good sign of confidence that the investors have placed in us. So all in all, it's a good, pra uh, good one. And start to finish, it took us about maybe five, six weeks, but we are where we are today. Okay. If you could just throw some numbers, where does this take you in terms of net worth, in terms of CRER, more than anything else, capital adequacy? Um, at the end of the June quarter, we were close to 14.8. Uh, this will add another 1.4%, so we'll enter the 16, 16 or so. And when the, hopefully the PREF process will complete uh, uh, on our AGM or around that time, once the regulatory approvals and the shareholder approvals come, it will take us to mid-16s, right? So that's was one objective. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the other part of the question was on QIP per se, a mix of uh, investors have been, like I mentioned, both yes. overseas and domestic. A good breadth of investors. Good, good breadth, yes. Okay. Uh, now, what do you do with the money? Are you expecting that you will be able to do much faster growth do you have an internal target in terms of advances growth? No, I think uh, the capital raise was to support the growth we've been talking of, right? We've been, uh, last few quarters, if you've seen, sequentially growing 4-5%. Yes. Right? And uh, this quarter that went by, uh, we registered a growth of about 20% Y on Y and sequentially about 4%. Yes. And Q1 is seasonally a low quarter, but we saw hefty growth. Uh, we believe that the... 18, 20 odd percent growth that we are seeking to do uh, is going to be aided by this. It's not like I would not. But would be there be more risk weighted assets? We is that be, also part we of have a, We have a risk. Because you brought down your RWA. No, the RWA shift between one quarter and the other, I did explain on the air, was only because of a timing difference. There were some unrated customers who just got rated or added on. So it was not a risk profile didn't change, it was just a timing issue. But the longer point, the larger point is uh, our risk appetite is fairly framed. We don't want to sort of suddenly, because we have more money, uh, take higher risk, right? I think to guide uh, an 18, 20% growth, we needed a certain capital adequacy. This process, we hit the triggers. Our internal triggers, if CET1 is in and around 13, 
we need to look for a new capital raise. So over the last 10, 11 years, if you've seen Federal Bank, which you have, uh, we've been quite stingy about raising money. We've done one QIP in 2017 and one PREF in 2021. These are only two. Happily, this time we did both on the same day uh, and you know for that 4,000 crore amount. And this is only to enable the 18, 20 odd percent growth that we are visualizing over the next three to four years. Our belief is this should keep us going for the next maybe three and a half, four years if we grow at 18 percent and put back uh, the profits that we will hopefully keep making. And you know, last year was good. If that momentum continues, we should see you know, capital showed up. That was up going well. to be my next question. So when do you expect to need capital again? Certainly not for three, four years, you're saying. Okay, uh, what, where do you see growth? Which are the areas that are asking for loans? I think uh, our approach has been retail, wholesale, sort of weighted 55, 45, retail 55, wholesale 45. Uh, we don't want to stray away from that. Within that, there are growth pockets. If you take our retail book, it's largely a secured book. We have a very small unsecured. When I say unsecured, credit cards, personal loans, and to some extent businesses like microfinance, gold, commercial vehicles. These are businesses that we have just about started. So if you take the last 18 months, these have grown at high double digit. High means like 40, 50 percent growth. But they're growing off a very small base. On the whole, as an aggregate, unsecured is about less than 3 percent of our overall outstandings. We believe in a three-year phase, as this growth uh, will dictate, unsecured and retail, retail part of unsecured part of retail will be probably about 10, 15 percent of the whole book, okay. right? So, the growth opportunity. We are 1.2 percent share of market credit market, right? Uh, I don't think we need to take crazy risk in any one area to grow, <clears throat> and that's been our model. We've moved from. 0.76% share of assets to 1.25, 1.3. So gaining share. I believe we can go up to 2% share without taking any untoward disproportionate risk and still be rewarded for that. So I, so broad based. Okay. So with the current risk metrics itself, 1820 <coughs> should not be a, a We challenge. should be able to do. Okay. But you know, people are talking about a lot of AI, uh, you know, because of the digital footprint perhaps that is now available. Uh, some chairman, and you may have seen them in the uh, other other media as well, saying that our insecure. Uh, I am more confident of my unsecured than my secured. You, uh, you don't want to go down that path. No, no, it's not like going down the path. See, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, I did start my career in unsecured, right? Uh, so I have a feeling uh, these look good in good times, okay. right? So you can't get too carried away. But the issue in unsecured is not lending. The issue in unsecured is collecting, right? So, if you don't have the collection infrastructure, because per ticket is few lakhs or few thousands, you can't put an army to collect that. So, you have to use technology, you have to use science, you have to use data, you have to have smarts to ensure that you're collecting. And that is an institutional capability that doesn't get built overnight, right? So, you can't buy that capability off the shelf. So, I do think organizations that are stepping up on unsecured are ones who have established that capability for long many years. A relatively late entrant needs to be quite thoughtful about how much of your book has to be unsecured and how fast you want to grow in unsecured. Knowing that, we are being calibrated. I'm saying still we are growing 40, 50 percent, but on a very small base. So I'm happy for that growth, but it should not dominate the overall book for any bank. I mean, that's at least our approach. I wonder well, there's if one person who's going to applaud you for this answer, and that would be Reserve Bank. I am hoping. You know, they are. Uh, they have been cautioning uh, banks and NBFCs about the unsecured piece. Okay, I'll uh, come back to growth in a jiffy. Uh, you may find some money coming your way because you're also looking to list Fed fee now. Any timetable you have in mind, after all, the market is in a giving mood. So would you speed it up? No, I'll tell you on FedFINA, <coughs> they are, uh, we have 74 percent and our partner True North has 26 percent. Uh, the company is doing well and growing, right? They need capital for their growth. So the capital issuance, which is likely to happen in the you know, foreseeable future, uh, is to raise money for the company to run. The OFS part, which uh, either us or our partner does, is more... Uh, a demand of the partner, they may have, their fund may have six-year horizon, so they may have a higher exit plan. In our case, 
But you are doing an OFS, I thought. Even you were more to exit. A smaller component. Okay. So the component that we get as an OFS is very uh, m minimal. So it's not. Uh, uh, we still, at this juncture, are a large investor. We think uh, our our investment there is uh, something for the long run. So there is no monetizing plan on that. Yes. It's, uh, the company is doing well. We want that to grow. And over passage of time, we'll see. At this point in time, do not may do a higher part of that. But beyond that, the company okay, should so not. So I should not mix it up with fundraising. No. Okay. Now, to come back to uh, the main bank, uh, the other talking point for all banks have is going to be net interest margins. Uh, we know that one big bank is taken on a huge asset in the form of HDFC. Uh, though when we spoke to HDFC, they said we have not raised our deposit rates. Nevertheless, there is a competition for deposits. So, do you think for the system and for yourself, margins now have peaked? Uh, I think last quarter and the one I mean Q1 of FY24 yes. and Q4 of FY23 where our uh, quarters where we saw the margin contraction happen and we had guided for that. In Q1 post results, we have said we have a line of sight, all things being equal, our margin expansion from here on will start only because the way we have structured our book and our ALM and our repricing and our, ta you know, and our uh, transference of rate increase or decrease to the client as a different model. So we believe in FY24 here on all things being equal, no rate increase or no rate decrease, we believe our margin expansion which we have been guiding for a 5-7 basis points improvement from where we are is very likely and that is our conviction because the book, book structure allows us to do that. Okay, uh, can you elaborate a little more? Is it that you do not have, uh, you have a lot of EBLR loans uh, which will start uh, getting See, priced uh, higher? We, uh, I, I mean, why, why are you so confident that you will be able yeah, to sure. spend much? Uh, we do all our rate transmission T plus 1, okay. right? So, we do technically, mm -hmm. ours may be one quarter or 90 days After ahead of the other, oh, so right. okay. if bank A or B or C, they may pass their rate increase or decrease T plus 90 or T plus whatever the cycle is. Ours is T plus 1. To that extent, the rate transference is immediate from us, both on the asset and we have a savings which is linked to repo. Okay. Right. Oh, oh, okay. So, the rate transference on both instances are happening and our, as we plot out our term book, uh, we see the incremental rate of growth of deposits and what, what price points that incremental deposit is coming in, how are we priced our one year term, large part of term book is always one year. We believe our margin expansion is uh, expansion in the sense the contraction that happened, a part of it will get released. It is not like a you know above the peak rate, it yes. just it comes back. Uh, the, the, the second point on the term is that I think you said the big bank has not, uh, we, we, we have not raised our savings rate. In fact, through the cycle, our savings rates have been at the lowest end two and a half, now 3.5, right? So we don't pay and that's not our business model. But we do have a large a franchise which is very retail in nature. Our deposit structure you may have noticed is significantly retail. So we have a customer at the other end which is an individual. Yes. And we are blessed with a very good non-resident franchise and we've been working very hard to preserve that and gain share. So I do think, uh, and the Reserve Bank's recent choice of withdrawal of the 2000 rupee note also threw in some uh, plus for the market there was some deposit accretion that happened i think all that has introduced uh, increased the flow of money credit creates deposits if credit is growing 18 20% which it has been for the big banks and at an industry level in the mid teens deposit creation is following so i think in my judgment i hope i'm right the worst part of the deposit accretion challenge has moderated you will see and I will, I fondly, I strongly believe we will see increase in deposit growth as it is visible and the two big banks, HDFC and SBI, between them they anyway grow 2 lakh crores a quarter, right, yes. deposits yes. and we have been gaining share. Yes. So, means there is momentum in the market, so that is what I would believe. Okay. Well, I have not done with the liability questions because uh, Federal Bank has announced a very interesting NRE account for women. Uh, to coincide with the FIFA Women's uh, uh, Championships. More on that after the break.